so great to see so many of you joining us and nice nice to introduce yourselves in the chat feel free to just talk in the background uh welcome to our charity digital focus group my name is alice Roche, and i am the chief operating officer at charity digital and i will be your host for today's session so what I do at Charity Digital is I manage uh, our e-commerce, our growth, our product sales, our customer service to our charities, uh, and lots more. I will pass over to Laura to introduce herself. Hello, um, I'm Laura. I'm a content writer at Charity Digital. So I pr predominantly work on the sponsored content side of things. But yeah, just generally, we like to share resources and tools that will help charities be more digital. Hand over to Joel. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, my name is Joel and I'm uh, the programs manager. A uh, fair few things I do in the business uh, of, uh, in the charity for, char for Charity Digital. Um, so I provide consultations, uh, so helping give charities advice on what, how to digitally transform themselves, as well as helping out uh, with uh, sort of the product side of things and helping sort of internally um, as well. And I'll hand over to Elizabeth. Thank you, Joel. Welcome, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Carter. I've probably been here the longest out of anybody. And I am, and are the, uh, I am the email marketing manager for our dot digital um, product, which I will talk a little bit about further on. And I will pass over to Emma from InKind. Oh, thank you. Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm Emma. I'm the charity network manager for the charity InKind Direct. Um, really grateful to be here and look forward to, to meeting, speaking with you in a, in a few minutes time. Bye for now. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for introducing yourselves in the chat. It's lovely to hear where you're coming from today. Uh, so in this focus group, we will give your organisation a summary of the benefits of joining Charity Digital, from saving up to 95% on the Charity Digital Exchange, uh, to taking advantage of our educational webinars, podcasts and articles. Uh, and then we also have, as she just introduced herself, we also are going to give you an overview of one of our charity partners, InKind Direct, and how signing up to their platform can also benefit your charity. So if you uh, move on to the next slide, Joel. Thank you. Um, although before we begin, I just want to remind you that the webinar uh, is being recorded. The recording with the subtitles, slides and supporting resources will be made available for you in the next few days. So please do keep an eye out uh, in your inbox for that. And then if you have a question at any point, you can just pop it in the chat box and we will come to the questions at the end. And then just uh, an ask from us really that uh, we will also prompt you for some feedback. I think it will take like 30 seconds to fill in and it's just really useful to understand what you guys got out of the session and, and how we can continue to improve our services and what we offer you guys. If you wouldn't mind filling that in at the end, we will post the link. Um, so who is Charity Digital? So we are actually a charity ourselves. Uh, I don't think many people know that. We just went through uh, an extensive user research project that proved that not many people knew that, which is very interesting. So our mission is really, really simple. It's helping other charities and other organizations increase their impact by being more digital. And we do this through a, a couple of activities, which is providing access to a software uh, dramatically reduced prices, so a software program. Uh, so that's kind of free tech and discounted and donated. And we also publish content, so articles, podcasts, webinars, uh, in educating the charity sector and how to be more digital. Next slide, please, Joel. So yeah, so this is a nice slide uh, to include just a little bit about us and our impact so far. So to date, we've helped over a million charity professionals with their digital transformation and accelerating their digital strategy. We have enabled over 77,000 charities to save a lot of money on technology investments, um, which, yeah, is just something we're super proud of and we just wanted to share with you today. And if you move on, Joel, please. And these are some of our trust pilot reviews as well, which is just lovely to go through actually and include today. Uh, so from, from charities like yourselves that have used our services um, and whether that's through our content or our events or our 
for our education um, or whether that's through actually accessing the software. So I just thought that was really nice. Um, nice to speak to a human being is one of the comments. Uh, vital help for small charities. So yeah, you can feel free to read those at any point. Um, and I will now pass over to Laura, who's going to give a bit of an overview of the content and some of the services that we we offer through our content. Thank you so much, Alice. Um, it's so nice to see the real impact that Charity Digital is having. Um, so, yeah, so I'm a content writer at Charity Digital, as I said earlier. Um, at Charity Digital, we aim to be a source of useful, relevant and trusted information on the use of digital in the UK charity sector. So our mission, as Alice said, is to help every charity grow their impact through digital technology. As such, our content has four aims, which is to inspire, inform, empower and to connect charities with experts, partners and resources that will help them go further. Um, so our content current, sorry, bear with me, our content currently co comes in four main formats, which is podcasts, webinars, articles and events. Uh, could you take us on to the next slide, please, Joel? We'll start with podcasts. So we publish a new episode twice a month on every other Tuesday. You can listen on our website, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts and much more. Um, they tend to be very conversational explorations of different topics affecting the charity sector. So many of our episodes feature charity digitals, like um, I think everyone here is featured on the podcast at some point. Um, we research the topic very heavily and try to answer the talking points that we think will, as I say, affect the charity sector. So we've done episodes on the cost of living crisis, climate change, um, how to campaign for the climate as a charity um, and much more. So um, occasionally we do have external speakers join our podcast. So we have um, a fundraising trends episode each year where we reach out to fundraising experts just to, to discuss what's coming. And um, we also recently had an episode talking about how charities can create unit user personas in order to make the best use of their data for fundraising, volunteer management, and much more. Um, we also published recordings from the sessions at our 2022 conference last year and plan to do the same with content from our 2023 event. So um, yeah, I would watch out for that. That'll be coming this year. Um, next slide, please, Joel. Thank you. Uh, so webinars. Uh, webinars, we run those twice a month on alternate Thursdays. They're usually at one o'clock. Um, unless otherwise stated, and last about an hour, including time for Q&As at the end. Um, the aim of our webinars is to share expertise so that each attendee comes away with valuable knowledge, whether that's on digital trends or how to create a great supporter journey. Um, you can view upcoming webinars on the webinar tab on our website. Um, we have one coming up tomorrow on understanding AI for charities. Um, and you can also view our on-demand webinars there too. We have the full recordings of sessions and you can download the slides and catch up and learn something new at your own convenience. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so we publish fresh written content on our website every weekday on everything from trends like quiet quitting, it's quite hard to say, um, and how to's on creating content calendars, running fundraising lotteries, supporting volunteers. It's all intended to help charities centre digital in their decision making and push the digital envelope, essentially. Um, we also work with sponsors and tech partners to deliver content on the latest digital solutions and tools available. So this could be like looking into a specific donation platform or there's um, a guide being published about CRM systems that's coming up. So um, yeah, we we share that so that people can use it and make, as I said, make informed decisions. Um, many of these products featured are available to purchase on the Charity Digital Exchange, which I think Joel will talk about later. So you can understand how they work in action. Uh, users can get up to three free articles without registering. If you register with us, you can access all our content unlimited. We also have videos which tie in with our articles, summing up the key points you need to know, and you can find these on our YouTube channel. Um, you can also comment on our articles, which we find really helpful. So it's a, it shows that we're having impact and that we're engaging, but also it helps us know that um, where we can best help. If there's something that you need to know, ask us a question there, that's really helpful. Um, we do monitor the comments and they, yeah, as I said, they inform our content and what we publish next. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So this is uh, new for 2023. We launched our Climate Action Hub in order to raise awareness of the climate crisis in the charity sector. And we wanted to empower charities to lead in becoming more environmentally friendly. Um, 
so there were three key reasons behind this campaign. One, that charities exist for the public benefit and climate change will affect us all. Um, that digital offers both the solution and the problem behind climate change. And as advocates for digital and for charities accelerating their mission using, using digital, we wanted to encourage them to do that sustainably. And three, that charities have a voice to speak up on ethical is issues such as sustainability and climate change. And as that trusted source that I mentioned earlier, we want to be able to empower them with the right information. Um, our climate action campaign is made up of our usual content strands, so written articles, podcasts and webinars, and they're all collected in our climate action hub, which you can find on our website. Um, and all of this is free and um, there is also a really helpful resource bank, which po points to other tools and resources from other charities and other organisations. And all of that is mostly free, I believe, as well. Um, I found that bank really helpful. Um, so, yeah, go and check that out. Uh, next slide, please, Joel. Thank you. Um, and then finally, our events. So for our events, we held an annual Be More Digital conference every every year. That's what annual means. Um, it moved online during COVID-19, but in 2022, we returned to our in-person event and did so again this year in March. Um, the conference was held with the theme of overcoming the cost of living crisis with digital. Attendees learned, among other things, um, how to best create a digital strategy, um, how to diversify their digital fundraising activities and how to support and retain employees during financial uncertainty. Um, you can find the slides and listen to the session audio recordings from the 2022 conference in the past events section on our website. Um, if you want to access the slides from the 2023 event, you can email our events team at events at charitydigital.org.uk to make the request for the access. We also run online events such as our Be More Digital Fundraising Day and workshops, which are our most interactive events. They're really fun. Um, they have breakout rooms and room for discussion on topics as varied as financial literacy to running a cybersecurity exercise with your team. And most of the online events are free to attend. Um, the next slide, please, Joel. And finally, um, yes, the easiest way to stay up to date with all our content is to register and sign up for our newsletter. And um, you can do this when you register initially or any time afterwards by going to your account on our website. You can also follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn and um, all of our content is shared there as well. So you'll never miss a thing. Um, yeah, that's everything about content. That's a whistle stop tour. Thank you so much for listening. I'll hand over to Liz. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, that was great. And Heritage, yes, we also do grad fundraising activities and we partnered up with other charities to provide training courses to all types of heritage organisations, um, giving them the tools that they needed to make effective use of digital within strategic and operational planning. So if you are interested in finding out more, I would head over. I would recommend that you head over to the Heritage Digital Academy Hub which has great resources um, that you can look at and also with some amazing um, recordings of past webinars and workshops. Next slide, please, Joel. OK. OK, All right. that's you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be coming back to you uh, shortly there, Liz. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you very much. So um, Charity Digital Exchange, it's uh, been providing UK charities with access to donated and discounted offers, uh, validation services and access to training uh, for over 15 years. Now, many of you would have actually already come across Charity Digital Exchange in the past, maybe by one of our previous names like GT Exchange or CTT Exchange. We've had a, a few changes over the years with that. Um, but you may have come across us in the past if you wanted to get validated uh, with one of our external partners uh, for Google, for example, is something that we've helped out with in the past. So today I wanted to briefly point out a few sections of the Exchange website that um, could be useful to your organisation. Um, before I go on, um, an organisation can only hold one charity digital exchange account with one user assigned to the login. Uh, this is actually separate to the charity digital website that Laura went through uh, a few months ago. Uh, currently, we're working in the background of some projects of creating some single sign on. Um, so look forward to that in the future. Um, but yeah, when signing up for Charity Digital Exchange, um, if you can, uh, we'd re recommend you signing up to Charity Digital Exchange, probably using like a generic or a shared inbox. Um, what we find uh, one of the biggest challenges in the charity sector, of course, is a staff turnover. And um, so having a shared inbo inbox um, is to avoid any delays in purchasing if a member of your organisation were to leave and not provide a uh, like a handover of login details or something like that. I was going to say next slide, but that's uh, that's my job. 
<laughs> All right. So along the top of the page, uh, you can see a few options, uh, which I'll go over briefly. Um, so you can see one there called catalogue. So this is where you can view our donated and discounted offers. Uh, we'll come back to this a little bit more in a few moments. A uh, section called donors. So charitable status alone does not guarantee eligibility to access your our partner offers. They each have their own eligibility criteria, uh, which could be based on charitable activities, uh, your organization's income, or perhaps the quantity of, of uh, licenses that you're able to purchase. There's uh, sometimes a restriction on how many you can purchase at a uh, charitable discounted rate. Uh, the donors drop down is a really useful way of checking what the donor's individual eligibility criteria is, as well as other information about the donor and product itself. Uh, so there's another section there called Grow Your Skills. So you can click on this tab to check out some of our upcoming events. Um, Digital Fundraising Day, that would be one that's coming later this year. Um, obviously, uh, hashtag Be More Digital, we had a great one um, a few months ago, and I'm sure it'll be again in 2024. Um, you can also look at various courses uh, provided by our partners at TechSoup. And you can also use this tab to revisit the Charity Digital page and view our other content, um, as men Laura mentioned, such as articles, webinars, podcasts, events um, as well. And um, the last section there, the help section on this drop down, mostly self-explanatory there, uh, but a couple of main highlights just to point out within the help section is that it's particularly useful uh, for looking at help from our validation partners, um, as well as providing useful information uh, such as uh, delivery times as well. Uh, so sometimes software isn't um, available when you purchase on instantly. Um, there's a fulfillment schedule that each of our partners have. And um, so it's useful for you to know in advance when you can expect um, your software. You also um, have on that same page, sorry, I want to hit a, a little section there. <laughs> One second. Um, on that same page, sorry, um, what you can do is if you scroll to the very bottom, you can sign up to our other newsletter. So this one is more dedicated to the product side of things, so it can let you know when um, we've got a new product that's been released or perhaps there's a product that's been out of stock and um, you can follow the, um, the stock returns so you know when to expect it to come back again. So here's the catalog page um, just briefly. So I briefly mentioned earlier the product catalog section. Uh, clicking on it will take you uh, to this page uh, if you click on catalog obviously. Uh, from here you can do filtered searches of our products by searching by donor or partner or the type of software that you're after. Uh, we work with a wide range of organizations um, such as Adobe, Microsoft, Vast, Zoom and many many more of course. And we also provide discounts on hardware offers from Dell, uh, Lenovo and Cisco as well. Shameful plug to my face, you might see this all over our website. So as I mentioned briefly earlier, I also um, do consultations. Um, so on our home pages, you'll see my face um, and you can book a consultation with myself. I'm certainly happy to sort of explore um, your digital needs as a, a, as a charity. Perhaps you may have some queries about some of our products uh, that we may have and I could talk you through which may be the best option for yourself as well. And um, yeah, just I'm certainly more than happy to take up um, to spend some time with you as an individual and as a charity uh, to really take a look at what your charity does. And now I'm just going to pass over to my colleague um, Elizabeth. So one of our products is an um, dot digital uh, email marketing platform for nonprofits, uh, which Liz is going to kindly take us through briefly. Yeah, thank you, Joel. So we are partners with dot digital and we offer their cloud based and um, powerful email marketing platform for non for profits with exclusive discounts and support provided by ourselves, Charity Digital. Your organization doesn't have to be a registered charity to apply for this product, um, but you can be a trust, a social enterprise, or even an organization um, that works in the non-for-profit sector. Um, Joe, if you can next slide, please. Thank you. So just some of the features here, we've got split testing function to test your subject lines or your content. Dynamic content, um, mobile display features, you can improve your email personalization with the personalization tool. And um, you've got an automation tool there, so you can make really fancy journeys and you can execute personalized and contextualized campaigns with a minimal effort and the reporting suite. So you can identify trends in your sense or spot weaknesses, etc. Next slide, please, John. 
So the API.digital is an open source platform, so you can integrate with pretty much any other platform that will allow you to automate everyday tasks uh, across a wide uh, array of channels. The next slide, please, John. Thank you. So we offer um, three support packages from a freebie one to a pro package, and uh, we're really flexible. We can adjust the package to the needs and the requirements of each client that comes on board. The next slide, please, John. So if you would like a walkthrough of the main features or you would like a demo account set up um, just to get your teeth into it and have a play around with it, then get in touch and we will be very happy to help you with any queries that you've got um, with email marketing or even if you've got a question about our pricing. And that's it from me. Oh, passing over to Emma from InKind. Well, thank you so much for that. We've been working with uh, Charity Digital now for, a, oh gosh, quite a while, a number of years, and I learned heaps uh, from the overview today. So thank you there. Um, hello. So we're in Kind Direct. We're a, a charity as well. Uh, we believe everyone deserves access to, to life's essentials um, to keep clean, safe and well, and that no usable product should go to waste. We were founded, um, gosh, uh, 26 years ago by now, His Majesty King Charles. Um, born out of his passion for environmental causes that you know, we've been hearing so much about in recent days. Um, and really, to, originally, the concept was to divert surplus products from landfill and offer a simple solution to product giving. But, you know, we've evolved. We've evolved since then. So in this very short session that I've got with you today, I'm going to introduce um, who we are, what we do, um, explain how you, you can get involved, um, and then look forward to answering any, any questions that you have um, as well. So um, next slide, please, Joel. So we work with all kinds of organizations distributing uh, consumer products that are donated by companies. And these can be products ranging from things like toothpaste, shampoo, laundry supplies, clothing, electrical appliances to a whole range of organizations, some of which I've, I've got here on the screen. So you'll see from schools to food projects, even your good old cups and guides groups as well. Um, and all for a fraction of the retail price. And that's you know, really quite key. And we share um, their, well, and your belief that it just can't be right that in our society today, so many people just still can't access life's essentials to support you know, our health and happiness and hygiene. And my goodness, never more so now than during this cost of living crisis. So um, Joel, if you could just um, turn to the next slide. Um, I wanted to give you a flavour of just some of the retailers and the manufacturers and the startups that we work with. And I'm sure, you know, amongst those, you'll see some of the brands that you're familiar with. Some of these companies have been with us right from the start, um, right back in 26 years ago. Some came on board during the pandemic um, and then some more recently, you know, recognising that the cost of living crisis um, and all the work that we're doing currently on hygiene poverty. And they, you know, like us, um, want to help tackle some of these issues. So we've got companies like Procter & Gamble, for example, pledging one million packets of Andrex toilet roll. You know, the scale of their engagement and their commitment to this cause is, you know, is quite staggering. Um, so, Joel, onto the next slide, please. Um, I want to just give you a sense of, of how staggering these partnerships have been uh, with a sense of our, our, our impact. So not only does this incredible network of charitable organisations enable us together to reach an estimated 345,000 people each and every single week, but organisations um, like yours repeatedly tell us that by saving money on those kind of supplies, they can redirect more of your precious budgets on support services. So whether that's, you know, counselling or debt support or, you know, the work that you're you're doing at grassroots level, you know, more of your precious resources are going to that work and, and less on supplies. And I, I, I couldn't frame that any better than um, this quote from the organisation I've got here on the screen, um, an organisation called Emmaus, and, and this one is in Greenwich, um, that says that some of the people that come to them arrive with just the clothes on their back and a small bag of possessions. And through In Kind Direct, we were able to provide them with a welcome bag of toiletries and laundry products. So that's what we're about. So that that dual um, purpose of saving products going from landfill 
while also directly getting them to people who really need them. So Joel, if you can just take me on to um, my final slide. I just wanted to get give you a sense of how it all works and, and then really happy to take any further questions you have about this. So um, if you look at um, where would we be one o'clock on this on this clock at number one. Um, so products come to us and, and here's a little uh, photograph here of just a kind of a truck um, that comes to us and they come in truckloads from, from the companies um, that I mentioned earlier who donate these products and we've got a really big distribution centre in Shropshire. So these products come to us um, and then we sort them. So we clean them, um, break them down into smaller quantities for distributing out to organisations like yours. Um, and then we, well, we upload them to our website. So um, we have a catalogue, um, Charity Digital just outlined their catalogue website. Um, so do we. So we would take photographs of the products that, that we get. Um, we upload those to our website with descriptions um, about the products, the quantity that they come in, any expiry dates. Um, and so when an organisation like yours registers, um, to join our network, you then receive a login to that website and, and to register it's completely free and, and I pop the, the, the web address there in, the, in that bottom right hand corner. So you get a login to access the catalogue website um, and then each of the products has a, a really small nominal charge and that works out at about 20% um, of the retail price. And that's the contribution towards our operational costs. So that warehouse um, and, and the cost, crucially the cost of getting the, the package, uh, the carton, the pallet, whatever quantity it might be to your door. So we, we, we deliver that directly to your door. So you can see why organizations tell us about the terrific savings that they can achieve. Um, so we distribute the products out and then right round that clock face um, to, to number five. Um, we're all about celebrating the impact. Um, you know, you know this no better than I, you know, a tube of toothpaste isn't just a product. It's about the smile. Um, it's about having clean teeth, isn't it? About that sense of confidence when you step out um, in the morning. And so we celebrate the, the impact of these products, what these mean to people, to communities and to the organizations that receive these. And then we can then feed that feedback feed the feedback back to the companies that donate the products um, and that just fuels then the, the pipeline they love to hear about you know the personal the social impact of the work that they're doing so that's a little bit about the, the model that, that we operate in um, and yeah that's that's what I would just want to say about in-kind direct um, so yeah please um, ask away any questions um, but I think I'll hand back to Alice Thank you so much, Emma. Uh, likewise, we've been working together for years, but that was really wonderful to learn more about what InKind are doing. I can see all my colleagues nodding and it's just, yeah, truly very humbling and choked me a little bit with that quote there. Um, so really, really, truly wonderful work that you're all doing. Um, also, people that are registered with Charity Digital uh, can also get accelerated through uh, the in-kind platform as well and vice versa. So if you're registered on one or the other uh, and then want to register with Charity Digital and you're already registered with in-kind, you can accelerate and get sort of bumped up that process. And we have a way of identifying that in our in our registration process. Um, well, thank you, everybody. I know that was also a lot of information probably to process. Um, we've got many strings to our bow uh, at Charity Digital, many things that we do. So uh, a lot of information to process, but we've had some questions through. Uh, so, so we'll move on to those. And on the screen, there are the email addresses that can help you further if you need anything. I know that James has been really excellent in the back end, putting all the links in the chat as well as we've gone along. So thank you, James. One last thing I would say from the charity digital side is we also have a live chat system. Um, so if you go on our website, you can be put in touch with a human in five seconds. Uh, and it is one of our brilliant customer service team. Uh, and we also, yeah, you can you can email us as provided by that email address there. And we also have telephone support. So we really are there, uh, however, which way you prefer to communicate. 
Uh, I personally like to talk to a human and yeah, <laughs> don't like robots too much. I know that's uh, outrageous to say with the world of AI and everything happening at the moment. So if we move on to the questions, we've actually had some pre-submitted ones, which is great. So thank you so much for those. Uh, so we had one that I think, Joel, you may be best placed to our answer. So it says day to day, it would be useful to have editing capabilities for PDFs. How would we go about accessing a license to do this for two members of staff? Sure. I mean, the 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 big one when it comes to the editing PDFs is Adobe Acrobat, um, which is um, certainly something that we provide on Charity Digital Exchange. There's actually two versions of it available. Uh, we have the Adobe Acrobat Pro, it's the 2021 version, I think it might be 22, so I have to double check that, but it's um, the desktop version. What I mean by desktop is that you install the license on a specific machine and then the license, I believe, um, at this stage will last, if you to purchase today, will last until December 2026. Um, now, if you, if you say for two users, if you are using two separate devices, uh, then you'd need to purchase that type of license twice. Um, I believe it's it's around fifty pounds uh, without checking uh, for one license, uh, but like I said, that will cover you up until twenty twenty six. Maybe a little less than that, but it is on our product catalog, so it may have a higher upfront cost. But you are you will have access to a, um, editing PDF software uh, for the best part of uh, three years. The other option is called Adobe DC uh, DC. So it's the same type of you know uh, editing software, but it's based in the cloud. It's a subscription service instead. Um, it, because it's based in the cloud, um, obviously it's the future uh, of technology now. It made one of the great things about it. It's flexible, so you can log in to your Adobe uh, DC account from any device that you're using. So where, well, I say any device like your laptop or a Mac or a home device or work device, and continue using your editing PDF software. So. It's, um, I would say the superior product would be the Adobe DC, um, but it would have, uh, it would be a little bit more costly. Um, we can provide you a 13% discount off Adobe's current rates for the first year only. I believe once that discount has been added, you're paying about 120 pounds uh, for the year. So it does work out actually being more um, than the, the desktop version. So really you just got to maintain what, where you, you got to balance whether it's going to be cost, um, Versus, versus like the utilization and how effective it is for you. Um, hope I found that useful. Excellent. And also, yes, as somebody pointed out in the chat, there is also a free way to convert PDFs, which is tinywow.com. I've never heard of that, but um, thank you so much. Uh, I think it's really wonderful when people help each other in the chat as well. So please do feel free to do that. It's uh, really, really useful. We all learn something then. Uh, thank you, Joel. So I'm going to go on to the next question. I actually think this one's for you, Emma, which is, is this just for charities working with communities or can any charity stock their cleaning cupboards? Oh, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, oh, thank you, Joel. Yes, you, you thought ahead. Um, we are a really broad organisation and this sort of had this broad definition of charitable organisations and a charitable network. So here's just a range of the different kinds of organisations uh, that we support. And I, I heard in your introductions um, that you use the term not for profit. So, yeah, a really, really broad range of organisations at the heart. These are all organisations that are planning to use products for a charitable purpose. So, um, so not for reselling, not for income generating, but for a charitable purpose. So that's right through from schools that you wouldn't normally think of as a, as a charity as such. So schools, the, sc the Scouts Guides, right through to social enterprises, CIC, CIO. So really, really broad range of organisations. Um, there's very few types of organisations that we, we would consider to be ineligible. Um, so those would include, for example, private schools that don't have the SEN provision. Um, we might um, to ask some questions about um, faith organisations that they must show evidence of, of community outreach, but really a very, very broad definition. So, you know, if, you, if you're unsure, um, have a look at we've got a little bit of a, a eligibility checker on our website. But usually the golden rule is, yes, if you're operating some kind of charitable service, charitable outreach, then yes, please do come and join our network. We're really keen to support you to support your community. 
Excellent. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, we also had another that was saying that they were a CIC, but you, you've answered that perfectly. Um, and we have another for in kind, which is, are the products brand new? Thinking infection control in a hospice. Oh, yes. Thank you, Karen. I, I saw that question pop up in the chat. A really, really good question um, when we talk about donated products. So the products that we receive come directly from the manufacturers, retailers and startups as new or unused products. We're really clear about that. And we, we do. We uh, we reject um, products on, the, on that basis. We will turn them away where there may be products that have expiry dates. Um, so. Um, I can think of some hand wash, um, hand sanitizer um, most recently. We'll either put that information really clearly in the description on our website um, or, or you know, be very labelled very clearly on, on the packaging that you receive. Um, and sometimes that's the case. Um, they're being donated to us because they're coming up to the end of line. But we ask those kinds of questions before we accept a donation and we want to make sure that they have a reasonable shelf life in order to get via organisations like yours out to the community uh, without having to rush to use them. So the only exception I, I, I should point out um, to that rule uh, is actually around refurb tech um, and actually a conversation we're having with Charity Digital. So we recently launched a, a refurb laptop program. So that's not new um, tech, that's, that's refurbished, um, but that will be the only exception. Otherwise it's new or unused. I hope that answers the question, Karen. That's great. Thank you so much, Emma. We have just had another through the chat. Thank you so much. Uh, keep them coming. Uh, Karen just said thank you, Emma, as well. Um, so we had one saying that we are looking at a social media scheduling platform, Hootsuite, etc. Have you any advice? Yeah, I'm happy to answer this one. Uh, I never know if I'm saying it right. Hoots, Hootsuite, Hootsuite, I, I'm not sure. Uh, but actually, yes, we we actually, as of this week, uh, have had uh, that that program added to our, uh, that software added to our catalogue, which is very exciting. So it's a social media engagement tool for those that don't know, and it allows you to promote content, increase engagement and streamline your customer service and your social posts. Uh, and at the moment with Charity Digital, you can access up to 75% off their rates, uh, doing that through the Charity Digital Exchange program. I think James, yeah, he's already on it. He's so brilliant. He's already posted the link in the chat. Uh, we also have uh, Adobe Express, which is completely free, but it's out of stock at the moment for another week, I think. So if you're interested in the free option, then yeah, do, do keep your eyes peeled because Adobe Express will come back. But yeah, it's very exciting that we've had that added to our catalogue this week. So great question. Thank you for that. Um, and another one. Do you have any guidance on CRM or volunteer management systems, please? Uh, which is a very, very popular question. Volunteer management systems feels like such a popular topic at the moment. So we have plenty of content on this. We have done previous webinars. We've got lots of articles on um, best CRMs to use. Uh, a complete guide to volunteering was one webinar we did. I should know because I presented it. Uh, so I will get James to post those articles and the previous webinars in the chat. Um, and in terms of the Charity Digital Exchange program, so the software that we provide, the only CRM that we provide through our catalogue at the moment, because we don't actually control the catalogue ourselves, the, uh, the products get added by our partners. So we currently only have Donor Perfect. Um, so I think we we did once upon a time have Zoho, but not anymore. But that's a really popular CRM and that's a really good one that I've got experience using. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think James has just posted those in the chat. So hopefully that helps that person that asked. Uh, and I am just looking up at questions. Um, and yes, yeah, Donify can manage volunteers. Thank you, Yvette. We'll have to hire you. You're doing so much great work in the in the chat. Um, have I missed any questions? Um, do do shout if if we have. 
Yes, we do. Um, so we have one from Joe. Um, this was in the chat. Um, we are looking at some sort of scanning tool that we can begin to digitize our paper records, especially invoices. Have had Filestar recommended. Please, can you say if you know anything? Haven't come across file scanning software exactly. At least it's something I haven't um, had the pleasure of coming across before. I guess maybe I'm. I've been, always been working in digital environments. I mean, the last time I worked with paper documents, I literally used a physical scanner. And yeah, that was a that was a long job myself. Lots of letters, scanning lots of papers at a, a legal firm many years ago. I haven't come across anything in terms of scanning the documents though. Um, so, but if, if, was it was it the mention of, of pay? Was it to do with pay and invoices, James? Um, it was just paper records. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> I thought if you were talking about invoices, you might want to look at some of the non-profit offers from Sage if you're looking to, if it's something to do with funds, but I don't think that was- Yes, it's, it's especially invoices. So do you want to okay. talk about your knowledge of invoices? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I mean, there's the, the non-profit offer out there, the most famous one is Sage for non-profits. You've probably seen um, their adverts on TV, a massive organization who not only provide um, finance software, but they do a lot of things like grant giving and working with organization in that sense. So um, I believe then if you go, if you do a search term for Sage for nonprofits on a search engine, you, you can find that. Um, outside of that, from my own experience, now I'm not a finance person, but sometimes I do have to get involved um, with invoicing and that kind of thing. Um, I, I have actually used Xero um, quite uh, frequently. Um, if you're in a position where you, you're perhaps doing kind of financial work, but not as a CFO, so maybe you're sending invoices out on a regular basis, um, I've used Xero and it's really, really user friendly, a good way to track when the funds are coming in as well, when to search them up as well. Um, I'm unsure if they've got a non-profit offer, but um, something we always say in Charity Digital is um, anytime you're, you're speaking to any sort of software provider, even hardware provider, always ask, do you have a non-profit offer? As um, many of the times they will, but they won't actively advertise it on their website, some of them. So yeah, definitely do that. Thank you, Joel. Um, so we have had we've had a few more come through. So this one is um, can Charity Digital Microsoft licensed donations work alongside Microsoft license purchased through an MSP or is it one or the other? That's a great question, actually. And so I come across um, sometimes. So from Charity Digital's point of view, um, we're because we primarily act as a reseller of Microsoft and we do provide some services on the side if required, but really what we want to do is just provide the licenses to you, but not have any um, sort of control or admin access that that's just down to yourselves, like we, we, that we just simply want to give you the products. What we find with other MSPs is that some of them are completely okay with that and they, they manage the licenses that you've purchased from us in your uh, your Microsoft platform, such as 365. But then there are um, other sort of sellers or managed services who, I don't know, they have a problem with that. It might be to deal with the way that they set up. Um, I, I know a lot of them create these scenarios where they they manage your whole network remotely. Um, and perhaps, I mean, I don't know the whole background why they make these decisions. It may be something worth investigating my end, but um, because they manage your your whole network like that, they may have issues with managing uh, sort of managing licenses that you have obtained elsewhere and not directly through them. Who knows? It could be could be a tactic of theirs. I'm not sure, to be honest. I um, mean, it, it, it can be a funny world in, in the world of managed services. There's there's lots of good uh, people out there who help charities and from a managed service and IT point of view. And there's a few sharks in the water, to be honest, as well um, with that. Um, so the answer is it may, is a maybe, but we certainly have a, don't have a problem in provisioning you with Microsoft licenses that are then controlled by an external organization such as a managed service provider. Thank you, Joel. Uh, we've also had a question about have we had any experience of compiling a cyber strategy? So I think there's been some chats about this in the chat, uh, a few people recommending uh, Cyber Essentials as a really great place to start. Uh, the NCSC, um, uh, the National Cyber Security Centre, they have lots of resources on cyber strategies. And we actually ourselves have a template for charities 
uh, for charity boards to put the right protocols in place, which James has actually posted in the chat, which was a uh, an article. So we do have a lot. We even have a drop down on our site, cybersecurity, because we do cover a lot on that, don't we, Laura? We do. And we also work quite closely with IASME, who provide the Cyber Essentials certification. So, um, yeah, we can provide some content from there as well with um, how to look use their checklist. It basically acts sort of like an MOT for your um, to make sure you've got these five protocols in place that can help prevent cyber attacks. So we can send that through. And um, I think we've got a really helpful video that runs through the five protocols as well, actually, which um, should it help really help inform a cyber strategy. And also look out for their charity week as well, because um, getting certified, I think they usually have um, a bit of a discount if you want to get certified and show your commitment to cybersecurity externally. Thank you, Laura. That's great. Um, we're, we're coming through thick and fast now, so bear with me multitasking. But we've had one that says, as a charity that has been running for a few years, we have some products in place already, i.e. Hootsuite or Hootsuite. Is there a way to get around adding discount to a product we already have in place? Mm, it's a great question. Um, in terms of our products, um, if you ever look at, at the product description, um, there's a, a section down the bottom. We, we have usually the same template across all of our products, or at least mo most of them, maybe not so Microsoft, but most of them where it will have um it'll break down the sort of services like like options like continuing service after one year or existing subscribers it will tell you the rules of both and sometimes it depends on the organization like sometimes they won't let you add a charity discount to if you've got an existing account in place already so examples of that would be um so adobe creative cloud for example if you have an existing sort of paid subscription with them or a different offer with them directly, they tend to struggle with adding add any charitable discount. So you kind of end up being a way where you might need to cancel or, or create a brand new Adobe ID. Another example of that is Zoom as well. So we do provide like a 50% discount coupon on, on Zoom um, subscriptions as well. But if you have an existing uh, paid Zoom subscription in place already, our discount code won't work. So it really just comes down to which product you're looking at, but we do break out down further down the product page as to whether it will work with your existing um, paid subscription or product or not. Thank you, Joel. That's great. Um, and then we've had one which says, as a charity, we often have high staff turnover. Do you know of any electronic systems we can use to help with this? Uh, so, yes, I will. I'll happily answer this. So we don't actually sell this ourselves. I wish we did, but it's a system called Guru. If James wouldn't mind uh, doing a little Google for me and posting the link. Um, it's a really brilliant piece of software that when I first joined Charity Digital 18 months ago now, I implemented, I think, in my first month because I was very concerned that I had all of these brilliant colleagues that knew all of this knowledge and had been here for 10 years or five years or eight years. And I said to them, what do you do with all of your knowledge and all of your information? And they looked at me blankly and said it was just all in their heads. And I thought, oh, my goodness, this feels worrying. So I implemented Guru after doing some research. And it is just this brilliant piece of software that offer a really great charity discount as well. One thing I'm very good at is, um, is saying we're a charity and haggling for a really good deal. So ensure that you always do that and always see if they've got not-for-profit pricing or charity pricing, and nine times out of 10 companies do. Um, but yeah, Guru's brilliant. It's, um, it's, an, it's an electronic knowledge base, essentially. So at first we started it in one area of the business and now the entire organization use it. So our customer service team are always fully briefed on all of the different products that we offer. Uh, we have over 200 plus products in our catalog, so it can be quite challenging and quite overwhelming to have all of that information for a new starter. So it's just really good. And, and everybody on this call from Charity Digital uses Guru uh, and it's really excellent for your own self-development and training. And, you know, if you can't remember that one thing and you just go on to Guru and yeah, it's really great. Yeah, no, thank you, James, you've posted that. So unfortunately, we don't sell that, but I would definitely check it out for sure. Um, and then I think there was just one more. 
um, which was, is there anything for voice dictation or transcription like Dragon Dictate? Oh, what is Dragon Dictate? You're laughing. Oh, you're this, laughing. this one makes me laugh because, um, I mean, in the most respectful way possible, we get asked about Dragon Dictate maybe once a year. We just get this query out of the blue. Um, some type out but I, I've heard this question come out about once a year every year since I've been here for the past six years but no we don't do we, we don't work alongside Dragon Dictate ourselves in terms of transcription wise do it Laura is there anything that we use for um for our videos you know like the YouTube videos and things as well uh yes we use Rev um which um creates captions for webinars it um it can transcribe podcasts they have an AI tool as well so it's a bit quicker but you do have to go spend time going through it and make sure everything's correct um but they yeah so that we use Rev but I think there are lots of other options available um I'm trying to think now off the top of my head um but we can look into this and in fact we can pr maybe produce some content with some options in out there for you because I think transcription is such a I mean as content writers we know that it's <laughs> it's one of the most difficult things to get sorted and it takes a long time so yeah we, I'll um, add that to our content calendar that's really great thank you Laura uh, and then we had another one which is on some of your products on your catalog it says no software ins assurance computer labs only what does that mean sure yeah it's a great question so it's, it's two parts I'll explain. So software assurance uh, in the world of Microsoft, what that means is if, if your Microsoft license has software assurance, that means that you can update to the latest version of that for free during the time you're covered. By version, I'm not talking about release versions or patches. I'm talking about if you're if you're using the desktop version of Office. So maybe you're using Office 2019. And say if you had software assurance at the time of purchase, and maybe it lasts for two, three years. And during that two, three period, um, Office 2021 came out. If it came out during the time of your software assurance, um, that means you can, up, um, you can update to 2021 version of Office for free. You don't need to purchase a brand new license. Now, the other part, which is uh, maybe a bit more confusing, is the computer lab section. So Microsoft have designed um some ch specific charity licenses uh for desktop products so again things like office that you install on your computer or uh, windows operating systems um designed for what they call as computer labs uh, so the terminology of that is there are many charities out there that perhaps are maybe community centers who maybe help those get back into work job procurement that kind of thing so they would have um Perhaps PCs or laptops within a specific area that are not used by members of the charity or staff members or volunteers of the charity. They're actually used by uh, the community, the people they want to help. So those computer, uh, so those organisations like that, can, instead of purchasing licences for their um, for their users, for their colleagues, it's actually licences for their um, audience um, and their. Uh, community instead so if you if you feel that you're if you're that type of community maybe you're into job procurement or you're trying to develop skills for youth that kind of thing you're like in a community center and if you have those kind of devices where people come and go maybe writing up um sort of um you know helping them getting ready for work that thing we're using word and excel that kind of thing you can actually purchase that type of license um instead of the normal license um instead Thank you, Joel, our in-house Microsoft expert. What would we do without you? <laughs> uh, so I'm just looking at the chat. I don't think there are any more. We have had a question about whether the session is being recorded and will it be shared with, with you all, which it absolutely will. A recording with subtitles will be released in the next few days and there will be an article with all questions asked and all the relevant links. Um, yeah, we started implementing that a while ago where we we actually wrote up all the answers to the questions and then shared it because I think that's actually quite helpful. Um, and we have put a little reminder in the chat if you wouldn't mind sharing some feedback with us um, just because it really helps us to improve our offering and our services and, and find out what you guys want to learn about. 
And also James has popped a link in the chat for a consultation with Joel, uh, who I think has proved himself to be an expert, but we now offer free consultations uh, where Joel can go through anything that you might need support with, um, any content or events you might want to go to uh, and what products you might be interested in. Um, I don't think anything else has come through. I am multitasking. Um, but I really hope today's session has been helpful. And thank you so much, Emma, for joining. It's been really, really great to have you and a pleasure to work with you and find out more about what you do. Um, and yeah, everybody do go check out In Kind Direct and their work and how they can benefit your charity. I think it's really important work. Um, and, and yeah, we'll be here for a couple more minutes if anyone's got anything to say in the chat. But just a really big thank you to everyone for attending.